Good morning, siblings in Christ. What a beautiful day this is, the first day of the rest of our lives, and here we are gathered together in this beautiful sanctuary. Perhaps we're a member, perhaps we're a visitor, perhaps we're watching online. Wherever we are, God is always around us, and isn't that a beautiful, not just a beautiful thing, it's a reality, and so wonderful to have you with us uh, this morning, certainly. Just three uh, very brief announcements right after church, will be the budget meeting. So stay for that as you're able, so we can uh, honor the stewardship that we're called to. And then next Sunday is the annual meeting. And there is a quorum that is necessary for the annual meeting, and it is 36 people must attend that meeting, so that you're aware. We need Sunday school helpers for February 25th, so kind of looking forward a bit for March 10th and 17th. So if your schedules allow for that, we sure would love your help. And always with the GLOW program that we have on Tuesday afternoons at Howe Elementary, basically after school from 3.30 to 5, we need help. Uh, whether it would be Bible story, uh, music, arts and crafts, gym time, etc. Uh, it's so wonderful to be back with the children. I have to tell you a quick little story. One of the children told me, he's in the fourth grade, and he said, they, they wait in line, you know, to go, to go home. We're waiting for the parents, right? And so they've got their backpacks and their winter coat and their jacket and everything. And he said, you know what, Miss Vicky? You know what I love about GLOW? I learn about God. I learn to love God. I get to be with my friends. And I get to work with wonderful teachers. And I thought, my... He has this. I shared this with Deacon Sandy this past week. He gets it. He totally gets it. And that is really profound. That is really wonderful. Please stand, if you would, as we engage our hearts and spirits and in silence. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in the newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Hear God's words of forgiveness for us. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead to sin and made us alive together with Christ by grace we have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen us with a power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in our hearts through faith. Amen. Let's sing. Lord has entered 
our human story, God in him is centered. He comes to us by death and sin surrounded with grace unbounded. See how he sends the powers of of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray. To the Lord, Lord of mercy, help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Let us pray. Almighty God, by grace alone, you call us and accept us in your service. Strengthen us by your spirit and make us worthy of your call. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, amen. Would the children come up? Yay. And guess who's sitting in my office? Yeah, Chloe. <laughs> Hi, good morning. How are you? You want to sit right there? Are there any other children and parents? They're coming, they're making their way. This is great. Did you think you were? Yeah, you're doing great sitting right there. Make room. Good morning to you. How are you? Good. Oh, I saw a thumbs up. You want to sit down there by Jacob? Awesome. Awesome. Well, last week... For those of you that were here, do you remember what I gave you, Jacob? I hand, what did you say, Jacob? A mirror. He gave, I gave them a mirror, and then they passed it from person to person. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, I will synopsize what he has profoundly just said. I explained when I gave them the mirror that what they were looking at was completely unique and loved by God. A person that was fantastic, right? Yeah, see? Yeah, it really is. Well, today, we're learning about what it is to be called, right? Now, I could use my phone, and we could answer the phone and do whatever they said on the phone, right? But you know what is really, really important? I have some more information for you, okay? This information is every single day when we're out, like maybe at school or shopping or at home or on vacation, we're going to meet a minimum of 16 people that we will come into contact with. 16, probably way more than that, right? So we have 16 opportunities to be kind, to be loving, to be treasured by God, and to show that we love God. We have 16, at least, opportunities to share our love with people. So here's what we're going to do today with these beautiful people, okay? You watch me do this, okay? Because you're going to do what I do eventually, okay? You're going to go up to two people, not your family necessarily, okay? Not your family. And you're going to do this, like to Zelda and Jeremiah. I'm going to say, God bless you. And they will stand up, and they will reach to two other people, and they will say similarly. It may mean that they have to walk a little bit, even crossing an aisle, just saying. And with this, you're going to show what awesome people you are. Okay? So they will begin. Jacob, pick your two people. Smile and say, God bless you. Go out there. Stage fright. I go with you. Okay, let's pick two people. Okay? There they are. There. God bless you. Now the Zimmermans need to stand, okay? They will do that. That's awesome. You did a great job. Have you picked your two people? He's fixing his sock. We're good. Nora, let's come out. And when they have said that to you, as you're able, stand up and continue it, right? Pick your two people. Pick your two people. Oh, my gosh. Can you pick your two people? Can you come with me? You can do it on your own. Okay, that, that's good. Okay. Wonderful. Oh, we're getting the hang of this. Did you pick your two people? You've already done it. Did you pick your people? God loves you. God bless you. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. It's working. Look at this. Oh, that's wonderful. Sure. Oh. How beautiful. The ripple effect, the ripple effect of four children. Four children. We're children, right? We're God's kids. Our effect is profound because it comes from here and goes right out, right? God bless you. So when you fill up with at Quick Trip after this, like I have to because it's on empty, right? I'm going to say that to the cashier. God bless you, right? Yes, wonderful. Last Sunday, if I remember correctly, we said the words to Jesus loves me. This time we're going to sing it, okay? Don't have to give us... Anything at all. Maybe an opening pitch. Here we go. Let's stand and sing Jesus Loves Me. Okay? Stand as, to your comfort. To your comfort. Okay. Then after that. Okay. Okay. Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. Loves me, the 
oh my, Mormon Tabernacle Choir, close. <laughs> awesome. So off to Sunday school you go, and I'm sorry I didn't get glowy. Maybe someone can retrieve it from my office. Oh, I, okay, that's good. So ever onward with our wonderful service. Bye, kids. God bless you. Thank you. From Jonah chapter 3. <laughs> the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, saying, Get up, go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah set out and went to Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly large city, a three days walk across. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's walk. And he cried out, Forty days more, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast, and everyone, great and small, put on sackcloth. When God saw that what they did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he had said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Today we'll read Psalm 62 responsibly by verse. For God alone I wait in silence. Truly my hope is in God. God alone is my rock and my salvation, my stronghold, so that I shall never be shaken. In God is my deliverance and my honor. God is my strong rock and my refuge. Put your trust in God always, O people. Pour out your hearts before the one who is our refuge. Those of high degree are but a fleeting breath. Those of low estate cannot be trusted. Placed on the scales together, they weigh even less than a breath. Put, the, put no, no trust, trust in extortion. extortion. In robbery, robbery take, take no, no empty, empty pride. pride. Though, Though wealth increase, increase set, not set not your heart upon, upon it. it. God has spoken once, twice have I heard it, that power belongs to God. Steadfast, Steadfast love, love belongs, belongs to you, O Lord, Lord, for you repay all according to their deeds. The second reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 7. Brothers and sisters, the appointed time has grown short. From now on, let even those who have wives be as though they had none, and those who mourn as though they were not mourning, and those who rejoice as though they were not rejoicing, and those who buy as though they had no possessions, and those who deal with the world as though they had no dealings with it. For the present form of this world is passing away. Word of God, word of life. I need to tell you I've been fighting a cold this week. I tested negative for COVID, so that's not the case. But, so please bear with me. The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the first chapter. Glory, Glory to you, o Lord. o Lord. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, follow me and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went a little further, he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat, mending their nets. Immediately he called them. And they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Please be seated. <clears throat> Grace and peace to you from God our Creator and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, Jesus is on the move again. This time he comes to Galilee in the north. His ministry is on the move. His cousin, the man who had baptized him, the one that we know as John the Baptist, had been arrested. 
And if you keep reading, we find out that eventually John would be killed for the preaching he had done. So Jesus knows that things are going to get tough. But that didn't stop Jesus in his ministry. He comes to Galilee after John being arrested and proclaiming good news. The time is fulfilled, he said, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. All the things that the prophets had talked about were now here. God had sent the Messiah into the world. Jesus invites people to believe in this good news. Jesus also realizes he is going to need help in spreading this good news. And now we read that Jesus is at the lake shore. There he sees fishermen cleaning their nets, getting ready to go home. Those fishermen were tired, probably sore, and hungry. Often they fished at night, because that's when the catch was the best. And this was hard work. Jesus looks at those two fishermen, Simon and Andrew, and says, Come and follow me, and I will make you fish for people. Simon and his brother Andrew immediately immediately follow Jesus. Mark does not tell us what went through their minds, but they heeded the call of Jesus. They trusted the call of Jesus and followed immediately. Where do you see yourself in this story? Are you like the fishermen on the shore? Would you, would you answer when Jesus calls you to share God's word and grace with them? Would you follow immediately? Would you change your whole life? How would you answer? Answering the call. In our Old Testament reading, we heard part of the story of Jonah. Jonah. And if you know the whole story, God asked Jonah to go to Nineveh, not the town he was from, but a foreign city, and tell the people to change their ways. Now, if you're coming to point to do that, you know, you're going to, you know what that would be like, right? Or vice versa. It's not a good, necessarily a good thing. And if you read the whole story, we, do, we know that Jonah doesn't want to do this right away. We only heard the end of the story where he did finally heed the call. But in between... Jonah resisted, and he ends up with a timeout with a visit to a big fish. And that helped him heed God's call, and eventually we heard he does head to Nineveh. Where do you see yourself in this story? Do you hesitate to answer God's call? Or would you want to run away from it like Jonah? Or would you answer God's call immediately? Or with hesitation? or not at all? Hard questions and even harder answers. For God's call can come into our lives and when it comes, it may not always be convenient. The call may not come where or when we want it to. And it may not be what we want. But the call comes. By virtue of our baptism, Each of us, each of us, that's you and me, have a call. We are children of God, called by God, called to live out that identity in the world. In that baptism liturgy, it says, let's see, do good works, not to glorify yourself, but to glorify your Father in heaven. Let Christ's love shine through you to others. We are called to do that. And there are many stories in the Bible that are call stories, not just those first disciples. Mary was called by God through the power of the Holy Spirit to become the mother of Jesus. We heard the call of Jonah in, you know, in our first lesson this morning. Moses was called by God to lead his people out of Egypt back to their homeland. Esther was called by God to help save her people while they were in exile. Paul was call- called on the road to Damascus. He was called from persecuting the church to to being the rock the church was built on. And there are many more stories. 
And if you noticed, God calls ordinary people people. A teenage girl, a persecutor of the church, a Jewish woman, Moses, who made excuses before he answered his call, and fishermen. And in those stories, no one had to give their resume or recite their education background. He, God, Jesus looked at them, God looked at them and said, come, I need you. God saw something in each of those and in each of us. And each of those people that answered their call trusted the work of the Holy Spirit through God's call. We each have a call story. Those of us in public ministry have had to often articulate our call. We are assessed and questioned. We have to state our calling and write about it. Yeah, am I right? You're in the midst of that, right? It helps us hone in on our calling. For many years, the ELC organized what was they called global mission events. Those events included worship, speakers from around the world, workshops, and fellowship. One year, I was asked to lead a workshop on a program the ELC had developed called Ministry in Daily Life. In other words, what they were trying to say is, how do we live out our calling as we live our lives? As the workshop went on and the time came when I asked if anyone would share about their ministry and calling in their daily lives, it was quiet. You know how that goes. And then one man started talking. He said that he felt his calling at this time may not be considered great or world-changing, but it was a start and it was important to him. He was a salesman in a steel mill. He shared that the environment was, that he went into in the mills was considered to be macho. And the language that was used was nothing he could share with us. He was always uncomfortable with that situation. He thought he had to use this language and participate in the culture to make his sales. After all, he had a family to support. He needed his job. But it bothered him that this language was inappropriate, and the people were not always being treated fairly. He took it as his calling to try to change it. As he prayed and thought about it, he decided his call began by changing, by his changing. He decided he would clean up his language and his attitude when he went into those mills. After a few months of visiting his clients and his language and attitude changing, he noticed so did those people in the mill. His clients changed theirs. As he said, this was perhaps not world-changing, but important. And so he began his call of living his baptismal comfort co covenant in the world. Ordinary people, ordinary things. So how do we define our call? Discerning a call is serious business, and let me clue you, it may take time. According to theologian Frederick Biechner, the place God calls you to is the place where your deep gladness and the world's deep hunger meet. So if you can discern what your greatest joy or passion is, and what you believe is a pressing need in our world, then find how the two intersect. Chances are you will begin to understand God's calling in your life. Again, he says, the place God calls you to is the place where your deep gladness and the world's deep hunger meet. Wow. God has given each of us gifts, each according to our own measure. So each of our calls will look will look different as we look for people just like those fishermen and we, we go and we look for people and we haul them onto God's mercy rich shore I also think our, our calls can look different at different times in our lives after I retired from public ministry I ran into a ministry colleague who was also retired. We had known each other since we were kids. 
Our parents had been friends even before we were born. And Russ said to me, now we're retired and our ministry and our calls have changed. He said, our calls right now is to take care of our grandchildren and our aging parents. And he was right. Surely a different call than each of us had been used to, but nonetheless important. So listen to God's call. God uses ordinary people. We saw how God used the children this morning. Everybody had a smile on their face by the time those kids were done. God uses ordinary people. God uses you and God uses me. Your call may make you feel uncomfortable. Your call may come at what you consider an inconvenient time. I, I had a four-year-old when I went into public ministry. You asked my husband sometime about making pigtails and braids on Sunday mornings. <laughs> inconvenient. Your call will change your life. You can be sure. God has a way of doing that to you. And God will be persistent. God will keep coming back time and time again to call you. God keeps saying, come, use your gifts. Be who you are, child of God. Trust in the work of the Holy Spirit. Answer the call. For Jesus says, do not be afraid, for I am with you. Thanks be to God. Amen. We continue with our hymn of the day.
Let's join together, please, in the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified to Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scripture, he ascended into heaven and sitting at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we celebrate Christ embodied in human form, we pray for God's blessing on the church, the world, and all of creation. God, our rock and deliverance, do not let your church be shaken. We trust you never abandon your promises to the most vulnerable among us. Give your church wisdom and empathy in its varied ministries. God of grace, Hear our prayer. God, our hope and refuge, you place the fish in the sea. Guide our care of the oceans and mm. all creatures that live in them. Hold us accountable for actions that endanger water sources and the people who depend on them. God of grace, receive our prayer. God, who proclaims judgment and offers mercy, be a model to the leaders of our nation and the world. As they lead, may they follow in your way of justice and truth. God of grace. Prayer. God who cares for the suffering, care for the survivors of assault and sexual abuse, and sustain all who minister to them, as the martyr Agnes ministered to victims of sexual abuse. Keep safe any who live under threat of violence, those living in poverty, and any among us who are ill or in pain. God of grace. 
God of resurrection and new life, as the first disciples shared the good news, empower us and this faith community to be open to your call. Mm. When we are uncertain of your call, assure us. When we have strayed from your ways, redirect us. God of grace, receive our prayer. God, who holds the saints against your tender bosom, we trust you, welcome them into your care. Comfort those who grieve, even as we place our hope in your salvation. God of grace, knowing the Holy Spirit intercedes for us, we offer these prayers and the silent prayers of our hearts in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Please share the peace.
Let us pray. God of all creation, all you have made is good, and your love endures forever. You bring forth bread from the earth and fruit from the vine. Nourish us with these gifts that we might be for the world signs of your gracious presence in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. By the leading of a star, he has shone forth to all, creation, to all nations. In the waters of the Jordan, you proclaimed him, your beloved Son. And in the miracle of water turned to wine, he revealed your glory. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. the beginning and the end, the giver of life. Blessed are you for the birth of creation. Blessed are you in the darkness and in the light. Blessed are you for your promise to your people. Blessed are you to, in the prophets' hopes and dreams. Blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for your son Jesus, the word made flesh. In the night he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus, took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. With this bread and cup, we remember your will, word dwelling among us, full of grace and truth. We remember our new birth in his death and resurrection. We look with hope for his coming. Come, come Lord Jesus. Jesus. Holy God, we long for your spirit. Come among us. Bless this meal. May your word take flesh in us. Awaken your people. Fill us with your light. Bring the gift of peace on earth. Come, Holy Spirit. All praise and glory are yours, Holy One of Israel, word of God incarnate, power of the Most High, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And deliver us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come, come to the banquet, for all is now ready. Can, can you, the altar guild, can you come? I don't think I should, as this morning has gone on, I don't think I should serve you communion with this cold, so. Okay. We continue with the Lamb of God.
shall always be on my lips. My soul shall glory in the Lord. For God has been so good to me. Taste and and see the goodness of the Lord. Oh, taste and see, taste and see the goodness of the Lord of the Lord. Glorify the Lord with me, together let us all praise God's name. I call the Lord who answered me from all that was a new hymn for you. Well, can we do it again? I, it's, it's beautiful, isn't it? It is, so maybe we can do it again sometime. And now, may the body and blood of our Lord J Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, our life, our strength, our food, we give you thanks for sustaining us with the body and blood of your Son. By your Holy Spirit, enliven us to be his body in the world, that more and more we will give you praise and serve your earth and its many peoples. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another in accordance with Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. The God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The God of all grace bless you now and forever. Amen. And we are indeed called.
go in peace. Share the good news. Thanks be to God. Yes. Oh, you didn't.